Word on the street is Michael Bloomberg is buying everybody up. Everybody from uh, small organizing groups in New York City uh, that have run renegade campaigns to third-rate consultants uh, to influencers on social media. That's the word on the street. Uh, mainly because this guy can can pay for his campaign to last all the way to the convention and beyond. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. The rest of the candidates in this race right now are literally being mercenaries against uh, Bernie Sanders. Whether they know so or not, they are tools to suppress Bernie Sanders, to stop Bernie Sanders, to keep Bernie Sanders' ceiling. Because right now, there are only two candidates in this race who can really make it all the way. And that's that's not just because they have a movement behind them or because they have money, but really, you know, to get through Super Tuesday, you have a lot of expensive states. You have California, you have Texas. And what does it mean to be expensive? You have expensive media markets. Can you compete on the ground in big cities? Can you buy ads in big cities where those ad costs are very high? Can you get through uh, different, different platforms to get your message out? And at this point, all of the other campaigns are struggling with fundraising uh, and, and they're struggling with organization. But Michael Bloomberg has bought his way into both. Bernie Sanders, of course, is raising record amounts of money. Uh, he has an incredible organizational structure. He has a movement that he has built over the last five years that has only grown. And as long as those other candidates are in the race, it's actually, whether it's Biden, whether it's honestly Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren, their campaigns staying alive and in the race are pulling from that movement. Now, there's a lot of opinions about uh, the centrists all, all canceling each other out. There's some truth to that. There's also truth to the fact that Bernie Sanders, uh, there needs to be unity behind him in order to defeat not just Donald Trump, but to defeat Michael Bloomberg. And I, I really think that there are people in the Democratic establishment who have, have an ounce of values left, idealism left in their souls, that they cannot see Republican Michael Bloomberg as the Democratic nominee. They cannot see another person buy their way to the White House. And that's not what the Democratic Party represents, even in this broken state that, that exists today. So you're seeing in the last few days more people who just two weeks ago were fighting against Bernie Sanders now coming out and saying, you know, we have to unify against Bernie Sanders. He's clearly uh, the candidate who's going to defeat Donald Trump and, and all these other shenanigans, whether it's Pete Buttigieg in Iowa or New Hampshire, you know, Pete doesn't have a path forward because he doesn't have people of color supporting him. And moving forward into Texas, into Nevada, into California, you need people of color. Even if another candidate comes forward and wins Nevada, they don't have the juice to go further. Whether it's the actual finances or the support or the coalitions, the only candidate who has those coalitions and the money is Bernie Sanders. But let's get to Bloomberg because he's the one we've got to watch. Michael Bloomberg, um, the other night I was, I was just, you know, going through FEC filings. If you don't know about the FEC, it's the Federal Elections Commission. It's where all of the candidates, any candidate, has to file their finances, how much money they've raised, where they've raised it from, where they're spending their money. And I just did a, a you know, on air, on a New Hampshire primary night, I just went through the FEC filings to see where Michael Bloomberg was spending all of his money. You know, he has has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on his presidential campaign right now, and it's coming from his pockets. But when you go to the FEC website and you see where he spent a good chunk of it, this is not a surprise. All presidential campaigns have this. The majority of the money has been spent on media buys, buying an advertisement. Producing the advertisement is a small cost, usually. It's the purchase of the spot on cable news or news or, or even online at this point that costs the money. And then the firms, even though the firms are paid, they get a cut of that spot. The firms have to take that money and buy it. And, and of course, the cable news industry stays, stays afloat that way. And, and really, all, all of broadcasting uh, stays afloat with ad buys from anybody, whether it's a pharmaceutical company, Tom Steyer, Michael Bloomberg, or Bernie Sanders. So they're getting a cut. But when you go down a little bit further, <laughs> this is what stood out to me. And uh, nobody's reported on this yet. Uh, this is a scoop, and I'm going to dive in a little bit more. Bernie Sanders, excuse me, uh, Michael Bloomberg is spending tens of millions of dollars, probably almost $100 million, absolutely almost $100 million on his own companies. What do I mean by that? 
Bloomberg has paid Michael R. Bloomberg $58 million for TV advertising. Michael Bloomberg campaign has paid Hawkfish LLC for digital agency data and technology services. Just one fee was $11.8 million. Michael Bloomberg for list rental and licensing fees has paid his organization, Everytown for Gun Safety Action Fund, $3.2 million. So all this money that he has spent in the last few months that everyone says, oh my God, he's buying up. He's buying up the Democratic Party. He's buying up the ecosystem. The majority of that money has gone into his own companies and organizations. He's making money off of his presidential campaign. And now he's going around and offering talent, organizers, consultants, pulling staff from other campaigns, from local campaigns all the way to presidential campaigns, and offering them double, great rates. Of course he can do that, because he just made a ton of money off of his own presidential campaign. Of course he can pay double and offer benefits and, and buy out influencers and pay them you know, tens of thousands of dollars for a post, because there's a return on investment. At the end of the day, presidential campaigns raise money, which is part of the digital advertising side. And if your own vendors are you, you're making money off of your own campaign. So this is a win-win for Michael Bloomberg in the end. Not only is he branding himself and his, his companies are making money, as he did when he, ran, when he was the mayor of New York City, he made more money while he was in office than he did when he was out of office. This is a branding opportunity, just like Donald Trump had a branding opportunity. This is a branding opportunity times 10. Because his vendors, his top vendors, are his own companies. This is a whole new landscape we're going into right now with Michael Bloomberg. He is taking the model of Donald Trump and exploiting it and, and putting it on speed, just as he did as mayor of New York. This is something we are going to cover extensively on this show, because when I ran for public advocate of New York, I ran to be the watchdog of New York. And one of the issues that I was obsessed with was how oligarchs from foreign foreign uh, foreign oligarchs, whether it was China or Saudi Arabia or, or Russia, were dumping their money in cities across the world, but in New York City, this makes a big difference, in real estate. And using uh, real estate, they, they pay for, for houses and apartments in cash. The real estate holds their cash because their money was not safe in their own countries, in those banks. It used to be you'd, you'd put that money in Switzerland, but now they're putting it in real estate because it's stable and because in many cases, as like New York City, they're also not getting taxed. But what happens in a city like New York is the cost of living goes up. The real estate prices go up, the, the housing market goes up. Even the rich people are complaining in New York that their taxes have gone up because of these oligarchs. You look at, at these big towers that are being built that are, 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 are tax schemes for the oligarchs, but also for the developers, the developers who are incentivized to build more luxury condos to sell to foreign oligarchs to stash their cash. And then the cost of living in those neighborhoods uh, is, is exacerbated. You have small businesses that are, are, are going to have to, you know, they, they, they close down and they put in big corporations because they're the only uh, people who can af afford to have the rent there. Who was responsible for that? Well, the first person responsible for that was actually Donald Trump. He, uh, in, his, in his early career, his first real estate move was to have a tax abatement passed for uh, what is now the Grand Central Hyatt. It's in Midtown. Uh, but he, he was called the Commodore Hotel at that point, and it was a very uh, unsafe part of town back in the, you know, in the late 70s. And he wanted to buy that land, but the city wouldn't approve it. Well, his father was a big donor to the city, the, the mayor of the city and the governor of the state, both Democrats. So he used his father's power to push through the approval of what was an illegal tax abatement. And he used his father's influence because the people who were in charge of the commission to oversee this uh, were essentially pressured because of the political donations of his father to pass this. And then Donald Trump did this over and over and over throughout the city. 
He used these tax abatement schemes, which gave uh, you know tax breaks to big developers to build high rises along along the, the 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 east side of New York City and Manhattan and throughout the city. And then all of the developers used this moving forward. But you know who took it to another level? Mayor Michael, Michael Bloomberg. There's more in common between Michael Bloomberg and Donald Trump than meets the eye. He can start all of these these organizations uh, to appear to be progressive, to appear to care about climate change, to appear to care about gun safety. But at the end of the day, those are, that's philanthropy washing. Those are tax breaks for him, and it's an opportunity for him to get his brand out, just like this presidential campaign is. He's making money off of his campaign. So don't be fooled. Yes, he's hiring staffers left and right, but at the end of the day, He's able to do that because he's benefiting when it comes to spending three quarters of his campaign money right now are, are, is really being spent on his, his own interests. So we'll have to see where this goes moving forward. Uh, staff is being sucked up, but I think it's important that we expose these things because there are some Democrats around who still have some sort of morality. And I talk, I talk, I'm talking about rank and file Democrats who have been working for the establishment but just cannot stomach supporting uh, Michael Bloomberg. And, and the more that we learn about Michael Bloomberg, we'll see more in common between him and, and Donald Trump. It's an exciting year ahead. <laughs> we either get more democracy with uh, Bernie Sanders or we go into full-blown oligarchy.